Hello, welcome to Only One Again. My name is Bonnie and today I'm going to be telling you about this missing persons case. It's actually more of a found persons case, but police are asking for the public's help because they have still, over a week later, not been able to identify who this missing person is. So it's quite a unique case out of Texas where I just recently moved. On January the 29th, 2023, in Midland, Texas, it was a Sunday afternoon and police were called to check on this young teen who was seen wandering around sort of in an alleyway. And if you're from the area, you might recognize the area is, it's the intersection of Ward Street and Shandon Avenue. He was wandering around, he had a bicycle helmet with him and some balls and toys and things that police believe he may have collected while he was sort of wandering around the area. Police thought of, at first that he appeared to be between 13 to 17 years old. Since then, they've changed it to slightly older than that. Now the age range they're guessing is between 15 to 20 years old. And the reason why they don't know who he is is because he is nonverbal and appears to have some kind of special needs where he has difficulty communicating. This young man was found wandering around in this area and they have no idea who his family is, where he came from, who he belongs to, like who his caregivers are. Nobody has come forward, which is just so shocking. He's currently in the care of Child Protective Services. I believe he's in a foster home now where he is safe and he's being taken care of. When police were asking his name, at first he was writing down something that they couldn't read, but then eventually they realized he's writing down the name Cordarius. And so people have been referring to him as Cordarius. Since police have no way of figuring out who he is and where he's from, they have taken his fingerprints as well as DNA samples, and they've sent that off so that they can find some way of matching up where he's from. So they're actually inputting it into genetic genealogy, and unfortunately that takes time. So they're going to enter his DNA into CODIS, into some other databases. They're also, police have been putting his pictures and his story all over social media, the local news, trying to see if anybody can recognize him anybody at all, a neighbor, a family member, anything. And so far, nothing. Police have also been reviewing some camera footage, surveillance camera footage. Um, and they're also asking the public if anybody has dash cam footage or any other kind of video surveillance, anything from the area, because they're trying to see if they can sort of work backwards and see where he came from. And so far they haven't been able to, they've, they've had leads, but it hasn't led them to any solid information yet. People have been wondering if there is any connection between Cordarius and a boy who went missing 14 years ago, back in 2009, from Immokalee, Florida. There was a boy who was six years old at the time, and his name was Aji Dazir, and he was also nonverbal. He also had some different disabilities, and he went missing on January the 10th, 2009, after he went to his grandmother's house, he went out in the yard to go play with some children and he disappeared and he's never been seen since. And people are seeing if there's any kind of connection between this that missing person, Aji, and this um, found teenager, unidentified teen named Cordarius. Police have said that they don't believe that there's a connection, but just to make sure, They've also sent DNA samples off to Florida police to see if they can just rule that out. So far, they have tried communicating with Cordarius in a variety of different ways, including sign language, using an AAC device, which is kind of like a tablet with different pictures that um, a lot of nonverbal people use to communicate. They've tried speaking in different languages. They have checked with schools, hospitals, They've checked with different uh, special needs organizations and groups to see if anybody recognizes him. So far, nothing. So that has led a lot of people to speculate that either he was dumped off by a caregiver who no longer can, I don't know, somebody who, who is struggling, 
with taking care of him, or if perhaps something bad happened to the caregiver, perhaps an elderly family member or somebody who passed away, and then this teen went wandering around when, when there was nobody to take care of him. That's another speculation. Some people think that there's uh, something criminal that has happened, then that's why nobody wants to come forward to, to say that they know him. Other people think he may not be from Texas at all, that he may have just been sort of somebody passed passed through and, and dropped him off. So the police, the FBI, and the Center for Missing and Endangered Children, uh, many organizations are working together to solve the mystery. So if you have any information, you are asked to contact Midland Police Department and I'll post the phone number. Now all we can do is just wait, wait for the DNA results to come back, which sometimes takes weeks, unfortunately and also to wait to see if anybody from the public will come forward. So please let me know in the comments if you've heard of this case, and if so, where you're from. I'm curious to know if this has this story has traveled outside of Texas yet. Maybe it's made national or even international news because it's such a shocking, strange story that nobody has come forward yet. My hopes are that Cordarius is reunited with his caregivers, if that's a safe option. I'm hoping that he's taken care of and that he's safe now. Thank you for joining me on Only One Again. Sometimes on this channel I talk about true crime stories that I find interesting. Sometimes I like talking about missing persons cases, especially on my TikTok account. That's I talk about missing persons cases all the time because the power of social media is so strong. It's a way for the person's story, their photo, their name to get out there to a variety of people in a wide audience where you know mi you know missing persons flyers are great if you're local but sometimes social media is just a great tool to spread the word and hopefully get to reach the right people who might know something so that's why I think I'm going to do some more missing persons cases on this channel. If you have any missing persons stories from your town, your community, or your family, please let me know in the comments and I will do my best to do a little bit of research and spread your story as well.